Hello, fictional. Welcome to the What If Issei. Today we are gonna see, What If Issei was the Hidden Dragon Leader. Part 1. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. For the students of Kuo Academy there were certain things that most of the school just never quite understood. One of them was Orc or Occult Research Club. The Orc, based out of the old school building, was run by Ria's Gremory, one of the two great ladies of Kuo and Akeno Himejima, the second of the two great ladies. Ria's had crimson red hair that flowed halfway down her body, sharp green eyes that seemed to bore through a person, and massive breasts that somehow didn't destroy the Kuo girl's uniform. A white long-sleeved, button-down shirt with vertical linings, a black ribbon on the collar, a black shoulder cape and matching button-down corset, and a magenta skirt with white accents. Akeno Himejima had black hair that she kept in a ponytail that flowed down her body and breasts that were slightly larger than Ria's. If you ask the men of Kuo, Ria's and Akeno were impossibly beautiful even by human standards. Those guys would be partially right since Ria's Gremory was a full-blooded devil, and Akeno Himejima was a fallen angel-human mix who was also a devil, thanks to Ria's. However, those girls aren't important for now. What is important is another thing that members of Kuo Academy simply didn't understand, the enigmatic leader of the perverted trio Issei Haidu. Kuo Academy, wake up Issei. It's time for lunch. Mitsuda Nishikori said calmly trying to wake up his friend from his nap in their shared classroom. Mitsuda had slightly light brown skin small black eyes and shaved head that once had black hair with a shovel-like face and large ears. Mitsuda was known as the perverted baldy because of his openly perverted tendencies and his habit of taking dirty photos. Come on bro. You know Issei will wake up in a second. Give him a chance Motohama Doman said calmly. Motohama was similar to Mitsuda in facial structure, but his black hair was parted in the middle and he had a pair of circular glasses. Motohama was called the perverted glasses and three sizes scouter because of his ability to scan a girl once and learn her three sizes without any mistakes. Then there was the final member and leader of the group, Issei Haidu. Issei had brown hair that stayed messy on his face and olive eyes. I'm up guys I'm up, Issei said calmly as he opened his eyes much to his annoyance. Issei was known as the hidden dragon because everyone believed he was as perverted as his two friends, but it was never proven by anybody. They only called him the leader because the two boys listened to Issei's word like it was law, and if Issei said quiet they wouldn't do a thing. It was a strange dynamic, but one that served their classmates well when Issei chose to use it. With another day of class over, the first two members of the perverted trio went over to the swim club for their usual peeping but Issei. Issei was a bit different. The target of his affection happened to be in the kendo club. The target for his affection was his classmate Murayama Kirishima, who was named vice captain of the club after only a year. As lovely as ever Murayama. Issei smiled as he gazed upon the girl he desired. Murayama had brown hair with bangs that hung over her face and strands that flowed past her shoulders and green eyes, but Issei was particularly drawn to an impressively large pair of breasts. Issei once asked Motohama to use his scouter to find out how large she was, and he was pleasantly surprised by the results. Right after learning the number, he told his comrade to never say anything perverted towards Murayama or face his wrath, and Motohama immediately caved. Dragon he was very much in Murayama was his treasure. He never grew tired of watching her get undressed, and unlike his buddies, he never got caught. While they used peepholes, Issei used a pair of small black x-ray goggles that he bought in secret a year ago, and he was extremely quiet. Unless somebody saw him directly he wasn't going to be caught by anybody. Not that he would allow anybody to see him. Help us a voice screamed as they ran towards his location. It didn't take much to figure out what was going on, and he was certainly displeased by his comrade's actions. Those idiots Issei thought to himself as he focused his attention on going to save his friends. Issei and his comrades had two rules as far as peeping was concerned. 1. Never peep on the kendo club because they were Issei's prize, and 2. Never interfere with Issei's peeping in any way. They had violated the second rule by running towards him. Running over to save his idiotic comrades, Issei made an absolutely careless mistake, dropping his goggles and leaving them behind. Issei Issei was angry the next day was an understatement. Thanks to having to save his idiotic friends, he left his goggles behind for somebody to find them. When he ran into his friends they were about to get attacked by the swim club and Issei stepped in to save them. He promised the girls that he would deal with the guys and the swim club watched Issei dole out a brutal punishment. By the time Issei was done with his two friends, they had two black eyes and a ton of bruises. Fortunately for the two, Issei didn't realize that his goggles were back at school until he got home or the duo might be in real danger. Just great, there's no way the swim club didn't notice where those idiots were running to. Worst case scenario the kendo club heard the commotion and discovered my goggles. Issei thought to himself with a cold fury exuding from his body. Nobody wanted to say a thing because Issei was awake the whole day and everyone knew something had happened. 
The awkward silence was finally broken by Mureyama of all people walking over to Issei, Issei can we have a private conversation? Mureyama requested stunning the class and serving to terrify the perverted duo who were aware of Issei's annoyance. Of course Issei said calmly. Internally, Issei was fuming since this all but confirmed he had been caught. Turning towards his buddies, he gave them a death glare which promised even more pain for them later, if Issei's suspicion was right. As he and Mureyama walked to the rooftop. Issei was both extremely aroused and extremely displeased by the current situation. Mureyama had him by the proverbial balls, and if he wasn't careful everything would be over. When they finally arriving at the rooftop Mureyama was pleasantly surprised to see they were alone. I have a feeling you know why I called you up here Issei. Mureyama said calmly as she stood a few feet away from the hidden dragon. Yes I am, but I must confess I didn't think you'd ask me about it in private. Issei replied with a toothy grin threatening to form on his face. Mureyama frowned a bit since her suspicion was confirmed, so the goggles I found were yours huh? Mureyama said solemnly. After Issei finished his punishment and he and the trio went home, the captain of the swim club went over to the kendo club and told Mureyama what happened. On a whim, Mureyama decided to look outside the club room and found the x-ray goggles in the disturbed area. That's right. I've been using them for the past few months to watch the kendo club in secret. Issei confessed easily. One might consider his actions reckless, but Mureyama called him out in private, so he took a chance. Why Mureyama replied. There wasn't anger in her voice, but it was almost disappointment, and Issei knew it. Do you remember the old stories about the brave knight that fought against a powerful dragon and after an intense battle slayed the beast? Issei explained calmly. Yes, but I don't see what this has to do with your peeping. Mureyama said in confusion. It's very simple Mureyama. Because while most kids gravitated towards the brave knight, I felt an almost symbiotic connection with the dragon. Issei smiled. You lost me. Mureyama said in confusion. The reason I peeped at the kendo club was that I possess a rather odd fetish even by most standards, a fetish for swordswoman. Issei revealed causing Mureyama to blush in disbelief. You mean Mureyama gasped. Issei walked over to Mureyama and placed a hand on the young woman's cheek as he gazed into her eyes, that's right. I found myself wanting to find a swordswoman of my own to face in battle and then conquer, and for a time my focus was my childhood friend Irina. However she moved to England for certain reasons, and while it was hidden for some time my focus changed when I arrived at Kuo. Issei smiled as he caressed her cheek with little resistance. Your focus became me. You've been spying on me desiring me and me alone. Waiting for a moment to conquer me, Mureyama said in a complete daze, while not resisting Issei's touch. What he was saying should have made her feel disgusted, but it was oddly romantic. That's right. Seeing as how I've confessed you can easily turn me into Sona if you wish. Issei said calmly pulling his hand away. I'm surprised you're giving up that easily. Mureyama questioned. You have goggles that you've confirmed are from me and my confession to the peeping. There's no point in resisting the inevitable Issei smiled. He was truly helpless in this situation and he hated it, but there was nothing he could do. I see Mureyama replied unsure of what her next move should be. Unfortunately, before she could respond the bell rang. Let's get back to class Mureyama. Issei replied with smoothness that she never heard from him before. It made her shudder far more than she cared to admit. Right Mureyama replied as they returned to class. The rest of the day went by pretty quickly, and when the bell rang to end the day, five people remained in the classroom. Issei, his two partners in crime, Mureyama, and another member of the kendo club Caddis, a girl with pink hair and pink eyes, that happened to be Mureyama's best friend. She was cute, but she wasn't the girl that Mureyama was as far as Issei was concerned. What's going on Muri it's time to go. We should get away from those creeps Caddis said anxiously standing by the door. I got it Mureyama said calmly as she went to pack her things to leave. Issei then received another shock when Mureyama used an impressive sleight of hand to take his goggles out of her bag and place them on the ground without Caddis noticing. Issei looked towards his perverted comrades and smiled. Looks like you idiots are gonna be able to come to class tomorrow. Issei said happily. Mureyama made her decision and he could continue his peeping. Even Issei Haidu had to admit that he was getting tired of the game that Mureyama was playing with him over the last few days of class. Ever since he had his goggles returned, the brunette made a habit of stripping very seductively for him for him, and her underwear had become even more erotic. He was being teased and taunted, and he knew what Mureyama was after. She wanted him to make the next move and he knew it. The latest stripping session came to an end, and Issei put his goggles away knowing what he had to do. Seems I'll have to teach that cheeky minx a lesson Issei smiled as he got up from his spot and walked back towards the building as he made his way towards the kendo club room in order to bring their game to an end. Arriving at the club room he knocked on the door and waited for about 5 minutes before the club room opened and a smiling Mureyama stood in wait, come on in Issei Mureyama smiled in victory. 
As they walked through the lockers and into the main hall, Issei was ready and willing to claim his prize. You'll regret teasing me Murayama. Issei whispered as they walked through the locker room. We'll see Murayama replied cheerfully. As they arrived in the kendo hall, the waiting members of the kendo club were stunned to see Issei with Murayama, and both parties completely calm. What's going on Muri? Why did you bring Issei here? Kata said angrily. Issei and I are going to have a little spar Kata's, and both of us know the stakes, Murayama smiled as she walked to the middle of the hall and grabbed a spare shinai and tossed it to Issei. The stakes were clear to both parties. If Issei won he would claim Murayama as his own, if Murayama won she would turn him into Sona. I see Kata's wet drop since there wasn't really anything else she could say. Sorry, but I won't be using the shinai. If I'm going to fight it will be bare hands. Issei said calmly. It went against his nature to use a sword. That's fine with me. Five clean hits gets the win Murayama said calmly. Hi Issei replied as he took his stance. All the two of them were determined to fight, Kadis wasn't having it. Hold on. I won't do this unless I know what the stakes are. Kadis said angrily. Issei smiled since it would be amusing to see how the club reacted, if I win, I get to fuck her Issei replied before charging Murayama at an impressive speed. But the Murayama gasped before taking an open fist to the stomach that caught her off guard and pushed her back slightly. Muri Kadis growled as she charged Issei with her own shinai. She wasn't going to let her partner be fucked by Issei Haidu. What are you doing Kadis Issei deadpanned before quickly dodging the strike and slamming his palm into Kadis's back, causing her to crumple to the ground in pain. No way Murayama exclaimed, realizing that he could have ended their fight instantly, if not for the five blows rule. The dragon never makes it easy does he? Issei smiled. Am you another member of the club roared as she charged Issei from behind. Another interloper. Issei frowned as he took out this girl with a powerful backwards kick. Ugh the girl groaned before fainting as well. Murayama couldn't believe how effortless he took out the two girls, Issei that's enough. Your fight is with me. Murayama roared. I'm aware Issei smiled as Murayama continued her charge. This time, Issei easily blocked Murayama's various attacks with his arms, and to everyone watching Murayama was in trouble. Much to his annoyance, another girl decided that she would interfere in the fight, damn you Haidu the girl roared as she charged Issei. Not this again Issei groaned waiting until the girl got close before grabbing her uniform and tossing her towards Murayama. Shit Murayama cursed as she collided with the latest attacker and went flying towards the edge of the room. That's not too I suppose, but I really must do something about the interlopers. Issei frowned though a part of him was getting more aroused. After all, the dragon rarely faced a brave knight alone. He could tell that the rest of the girls in the kendo club were raring to go, and since they wanted a fight they could have one. Alright girls, if you want to face me come on. Issei smiled as he taunted the kendo girls that hadn't already been defeated. Stop this Murayama said nervously before one of the girls stood in front of her. Sorry vice captain, but we won't let this bastard touch you. The girl said proudly. Unfortunately for the girl, Issei easily took out the rest of the club, using palm strikes and kicks alone. The kendo club had 10 members, and soon only two remained. That was annoying. Issei growled as he walked towards Murayama and the other girl. He was still barely harmed, but this battle was clearly still in his favor. Shit the girl cursed as she charged Issei just for him to backhand her away like she was an annoyance. Enough of this. Issei groaned in annoyance. He wasn't interested in these other girls, but he was interested in Murayama. True the battle got him charged up, but Issei was still focused on his prize. It's just you and me now Issei Murayama said calmly though she was internally stunned. He took out an entire club worth of girls like it was nothing and had energy for more. Yes I know. Issei smiled licking his lips and anticipating of finally conquering his prize. Murayama was no fool. If Issei wanted to beat her already he would have done so, but he was taking his time because of their deal. Since it would be pointless to continue, Murayama made a logical decision. I surrender Murayama said calmly catching Issei off guard. What was that? Issei said with surprising glee. Murayama blushed heavily before dropping her shinai and staring at Issei, if the girls hadn't interfered you would won by now, and we both know it. Hell for all I know, the only reason I'm still conscious is because you were bound by our original deal. Murayama admitted. Pretty much. I could have beaten you with the first strike, but I did want to enjoy the battle. I must confess that I was a bit annoyed when Cadis and the others interfered, but it was slightly refreshing, Issei said with a toothy grin. This isn't one of those stories that you told me about Issei. In this one, the dragon does win. Murayama smiled. I know Issei smiled as he walked over to Murayama the hunger in his eyes clear for all to see. Issei had his hunt, and now Issei was going to claim his prize. Lemon start, much like the day on the rooftop Issei put his hand on Murayama's cheek and stroked it slowly before planting a kiss on Murayama's lips. As his rough lips teased Murayama's, she quickly opened her mouth and allowed Issei's tongue to enter providing little resistance as she melted to his kiss.
This is amazing Murayama thought to herself as Issei's tongue toyed with hers, and it was only after two long minutes that he pulled away. That was fun Murayama, but we really should get started, Issei smiled as he grabbed Murayama by the hand and led her to the center of the arena, effortlessly moving around the defeated bodies like it was nothing. When they arrived at the center of the circle Issei laid Murayama on the floor showing surprising care, given how rough he was earlier. Issei Murayama mumbled before Issei crashed his lips down against hers, once again placing his hands on the side of her body so he could enjoy the next step. Are you ready Murayama? Because now the fun really starts, Issei smiled as he towered above Murayama and made his move. Issei easily undid the black sash tying her robes together before reaching for the white guy and removing it so her brawless breasts were exposed to Issei's gaze. They're even more beautiful than I imagined. Issei smiled happily. I thought you saw them when you were peeping. Murayama said bashfully not bothering to hide her body from Issei's hungry gaze. Issei smiled happily as he leaned down and kissed her right breast with his lips. Ah Murayama moaned not expecting the soft kiss. I did see them a few times after you caught me, but seeing them up close is different. Motohama was right when he said how amazing they are. Issei smiled as he started to lick Murayama's breasts with his tongue. So good Murayama moaned as she squirmed from the pleasure she was being given. You know if I didn't know any better I'd say you were waiting for this Murayama. Issei smiled viciously. No I wasn't Murayama protested, but Issei pulled away from her breasts, his hungry eyes piercing her own. Then why did you give me back my goggles when you caught me the first time? Issei smirked before resuming his work. What did you just say Caddis protested having just recently woken up? Issei don't tell ahhh. Murayama cried out before Issei bit her nipple in order to silence her. The smiling Issei reached for Murayama's Hakama pants and slid them off showing off a black pair of panties that had a noticeable wet spot. Murayama caught me peeping a few days ago and instead of turning me into the council confronted me and decided to return my goggles. Issei smiled snaking his right hand towards her clearly soaked panties, ready to tease her lower body as much as he did her upper. Inghh Murayama moaned as Issei slid his right hand beneath the soaked panties and cupped her mound. I'm sure you noticed that Murayama was a bit more seductive with the way she changed over the last few days. She did so in order to taunt me knowing I'd be watching. She was waiting for this day to come and now it's arrived. Issei smiled teasing her soaked pussy with two of his fingers. You're wrong. Ahh Murayama moaned trying to deny the truth, but her body was betraying her. Her panties were soaked and she was giving in to Issei's touches far too easily to protest. Issei smiled as he moved to the edge of her squirming frame and slid her panties off as a stunned caddis noticed just how wet her best friend was, if you're so against it, why are you so soaked? Issei teased. I Murayama started to say but stopped when Issei lifted her body up and flipped her so she was on her knees. It's time for the end of our fun Murayama. I'm going to fuck you now Issei smiled getting up and sliding off his pants, revealing an 11-inch penis. Huge Caddis gasped seeing the large pillar of flesh exposed. Thank you Caddis and if you want me to fuck you after I'm done with Murayama I will. Right now it's time to claim my prize. Issei smiled bending down and lining up his member with Murayama's pussy. Murayama knew that the beast in front of her would ruin her for any other man and a part of her was soaked just thinking about it, any chance you'll be gentle because it's my first time. Murayama wondered with a blush on her face. Issei smiled happily since Murayama really had submit to him, nope. Issei replied before slamming into Murayama taking her virginity with a fearsome strike and going all the way to her womb with the first thrust. Ah. Murayama screamed in a mix of pain and pleasure as Issei's taking of her virginity was the last step she needed for her first orgasm. You're pretty tight, but I should be okay, Issei smiled as he began moving inside Murayama and not giving her a chance to recover. So big. It's splitting me apart. Murayama yelled with pleasure. Like many in the school she wondered about the hidden dragon's true nature and when she found the goggle she saw her chance. His confession shocked her and she spent the rest of the day wondering whether or not to actually turn him in. In the end, she returned his goggles because she was curious. What would it be like to have the hidden dragon send his gaze towards her? What Issei felt as she watched him in secret with nobody being the wiser. Muri Kada said in disbelief as she watched her proud friend be completely dominated by Issei Haidu. She remembered her friend's more erotic underwear as they changed, she remembered the extra sway in her hips, and she knew what it was all about. She knew that the moment Issei walked into the club room, Murayama was his. Addis don't worry about Murayama, she's going to be just fine. In fact I think she'll enjoy this Issei smiled as he continued to move inside the kendo club vice captain. So good. Keep going Issei Murayama cried out happily. Dot. Trust me Murayama. We've got a long way to go and I want to savor this moment. Issei said happily continuing his efforts. The ease with which he moved inside Murayama was actually shocking, and Issei loved it. All the frustration he felt as he watched Murayama the last few days was being unleashed. Keep going Issei. 
Make me yours you damn dragon. Murayama roared in pleasure. Buldu Issei smiled grabbing Murayama by the neck and pulling her towards him in a powerful kiss that only served to stun the watching Cadiz and the other kendo club members that who were slowly waking due to the moans of their vice captain. As he pulled away he could feel Murayama's body succumb even more to his efforts and he loved it. Five minutes later and Murayama was finally giving in to Issei's thrusts. I'm going to Kuma Say Murayama screamed out loud. Me too Murayama. I'm going to blast a load right inside of you. Issei said happily. Do it Issei. Fill me up with your damn seed. Murayama yelled out. Issei happily approved of the request and picked up speed to get a few more strokes in. Here we go Murayama. I'm Kuming Issei roared sending a powerful load into Murayama's gaping pussy. Kuming Murayama roared as the powerful load filled her pussy to the brim and she collapsed onto the floor with Issei's seed pouring out of her. That was fun, but now it's time for your second hole Issei smiled as he pulled out of Murayama's gaping pussy in order to take her second virginity for his own. At least it was his plan. Wait Cadis yelled out stopping Issei in his tracks. What is it Cadis? Issei groaned in annoyance before turning towards the pinket. His annoyance quickly faded when he realized that Cadis was naked just like Murayama. In fact most of the kendo club were naked just like their captain. Why don't you fuck me while Muri recovers? It looked like you guys were going at it pretty hard, Cadis said calmly trying to hide the burning arousal she was feeling. She wasn't the only one who wondered about Issei's true nature, and seeing it in action was truly spectacular. Very well Issei smiled as he hungrily walked over to the pinket in order to continue his fun. Issei left the kendo club room three hours later, and with a slight limp, having devoured not only Murayama and Cadis, but all ten members of the kendo club. That turned out far better than I expected. Wouldn't you say so Drag? Issei smiled seemingly talking to nobody. All of a sudden, a red gauntlet with a green circular jewel in the middle and three sets of small red spikes that lead to a set of long yellow spikes appeared on his left arm. Yes it was partner. I'm glad you got to finally enjoy your wish after all this time. A deep and gruff voice said happily. When Issei mentioned a symbiotic connection to a dragon as a kid, the reason was because of the gauntlet that just appeared on his arm. The gauntlet was the boosted gear a sacred gear that acted as a prison for the heavenly dragon drag. Because of this gauntlet the hidden dragon had a second name and one that wasn't known to the normal part of Kuo, but the hidden side. That name was the Red Dragon Emperor. Ah, that was a fun day Dragasei smiled as he walked home from another fun day at Kuo Academy. It's been a week since he conquered Murayama and the rest of Kendo Club and life was good. Issei no longer peeped on the Kendo Club because he could just walk into the club room and choose a girl to fuck and he certainly took advantage. He would always start with Murayama since she was his Kuo treasure, but he wouldn't leave without depositing a load of semen in at least two other girls before he made his way home. Luckily for him, Drake made him sterile, so he didn't have to worry about getting one of them pregnant. Yes it was but, I'd focus on your other problem if I were you. Drake frowned. Yep life is about to get fun, Issei groaned as he made his way towards the bridge that led to his home. Even before his conquering of the kendo club, he noticed that multiple people were watching him when he left Kuo, and as he approached a bridge in the middle of town, he sensed one of them waiting for him. In the middle of the bridge was a young woman with a schoolgirl uniform that he didn't recognize with long black hair that flowed down her body with bangs in the middle of her face, violet eyes and admittedly a very impressive body. Normally one would consider this a chance encounter, but Issei was no fool, and quite a few things stood out about the girl besides her supernatural aura. First was that he didn't recognize the uniform for her school. Issei wasn't as perverted as his comrades, but they did discuss the schools in the area that had uniforms. The fact he didn't recognize the uniform would have been a red flag if he wasn't already suspicious. Excuse me. The girl said calmly. What is it Issei said with an annoyed expression on his face. The girl seemed slightly taken aback but continued anyway, um my name is Yuma Mano, and I was wondering. Would you be my boyfriend? The girl said innocently catching Issei and his inner dragon off guard. Hahaha <laughs> this is rich. How could anybody fall for this drivel? Drake chuckled. Tell me about it. Being asked out by a girl I've never seen before. You'd have to be an absolute fool to fall for this. Issei replied mentally before focusing on the girl in front of her. Well Yuma, I'm afraid I have to say no. Issei replied calmly. Why not? Yuma pouted cutely, much to Issei's amusement. Well for one thing, I don't know you very well or for that matter at all. You are a pretty girl that's for sure, but how can I date somebody I don't know? Issei explained. Yuma paused for a moment since she no doubt expected Issei to fall for the obvious trap, alright. I'll see you around Issei Yuma replied seemingly giving up. Now if you don't mind I need to get home. Issei replied calmly as he walked by Yuma barely holding back the smile that threatened to form on his face. She actually was kind of cute. Shame she's a fallen. Drake chuckled. Oh well. She'll be back soon enough anyway. Issei smiled viciously. Yuma Mano was a fallen angel. 
She hid it well, but Issei's ability with Drake made a child's play to sense her. He had no clue why she was in the area, but he doubted she'd be gone for very long. I never thought the day would arrive when I was annoyed by a female's presence. Issei chuckled as he walked to school a few days after his initial encounter with a fallen angel. Instead of giving up and moving on, Yuma was amusingly persistent meeting Issei by the bridge on his way to school. He wanted to expose her, but she was clearly after him for a reason, and he wanted to find out what it was. So Issei what have you been up to Yuma questioned. The usual teenage stuff, school video games and homework. Issei groaned. I get it. School's been pretty rough for me also. Yuma said bashfully. By the way Yuma where do you go to school? I've never seen that uniform before, and I'm pretty well versed in the uniforms in our town. Issei said with a questioning gaze. Yuma paused much to his amusement, since the question caught her off guard. It's a school called Iki Academy and it's just outside of Kuo. It actually opened up a year ago so it's not well known. Nice save and calling it Setting Sun is ironically appropriate. Drake chuckled. Yeah I know. Issei replied mentally. Yuma was at least smart enough to make a fake school and a decent excuse for why he didn't recognize her. Shouldn't you be getting to class yourself Yuma? I wouldn't want you to be late because of me. Issei smiled trying to get rid of the Yuma. I'll be okay Yuma replied causing Issei to twitch. Well isn't this a surprise. I never would have thought a girl would be walking to school with a leader of the perverted trio a voice said catching both people off guard. Issei and Yuma turned towards the voice to find somebody that neither person was happy to see, how about that, the terrific trap Yumi Kiba Issei said with a slight sneer, causing Yumi to twitch herself. Yumi Kiba was a second year like Issei with blonde hair that was cut short and large blue eyes. The reason for her being known as the terrific trap was because despite being obviously female, she wore the male uniform and bound her breasts, even doing so in gym class. She annoyed Issei because the idea of somebody hiding her body the way she did was infuriating to a pervert like him. I've gotta go Issei. You're right I'm gonna be late if I'm not careful. Yuma said nervously before leaving so quickly. How boring Drake chuckled. Yeah, but we have other problems to deal with. Issei groaned internally. Issei was also aware that Yumi was a devil, which meant she had great interest in the girl who just left. So Issei, how did you meet that girl Yumi wondered much to Issei's annoyance. Why should I tell you? Issei scoffed. He got rid of one headache, but Yumi was arguably a bigger one. He couldn't use his real speed to ditch. Fine, but at least let me walk with you the rest of the way. Yumi said calmly. Sure but no more talking. Issei gave in. Considering how troublesome his morning was, he didn't feel like playing hide and seek with a devil. Much to Issei's annoyance, the rest of the school couldn't stop staring at him and Yumi as they walked into class Issei, what are you doing with Yumi? Mireyama of all people said in shock catching Issei off guard. I ran into her on the way to class, nothing more nothing less. Issei said calmly. I see. Mireyama replied with relief in her voice. So Mireyama, is it alright if I stop by today? Yumi said calmly. Um I don't know Mireyama said nervously as she looked towards Issei subtly. I didn't know you were a member of the kendo club Yumi. Issei said with slight shock. Oh I'm not. I'm actually a part of the orc, but I stopped by once in a while because I used to take kendo in middle school. Yumi revealed before turning back to Mureyama. So is it okay? Yes it is Mureyama replied causing Issei to twitch in annoyance. Well if you girls don't mind I'm going to head to class. Issei waved before leaving managing to hide his annoyance at the situation. He was hoping to use his fun with the kendo club to get rid of his annoyance, but that wasn't happening anymore. Partner is everything okay Drag wondered since Issei left without any fuss. I'm fine Drag. I guess I'll need to find something else to occupy my time for today. Issei replied calmly. As Issei made his way home he was pleasantly surprised that Yuma didn't interrupt him this time. Clearly what happened with Yumi scared her away, not that Issei was complaining. It seems things are heating up Drag. Issei chuckled as he walked through the park not far from his house. Since he didn't have the kendo club to occupy him he figured he'd enjoy some nostalgia. Yes they are partner, but instead of focusing on that foolish fallen. Why not have a new hunt? Drake suggested. Are you honestly suggesting that I go after Yumi? Issei deadpanned. Yes I am. The reason you hate her is because she denies who she is. Perhaps a hunt would allow you to break her of that mince it, Drake chuckled. Perhaps Issei replied before his good mood vanished. We have company Drake said ominously. Yes I know Issei chuckled himself as a figure walked into the park. Much to Issei's amusement it was Yuma. Hey Issei how was school? Yuma said with an innocent smile. That's enough Yuma, time for the games to end. Issei twitched. He wasn't in the mood to mess around, and Yuma was not helping his mood. Works for me. I was getting tired of acting like that anyway. Yuma said in a much deeper voice as she began to transform. Her uniform was replaced by what Issei could only describe as a dominatrix outfit. 
The black bra that basically covered her nipples and had a small piece of fabric just below her breasts and her lower body was almost fully exposed outside of a small black triangle tied together with three black strings. Finishing the outfit was a pair of thigh-high leather boots. Yuma also had dark black wings with feathers all over. You know, if you showed up like that when you first introduced yourself, I might have actually become your boyfriend. Issei chuckled showing very little fear. Laugh it up Issei. It's time for you to die. Yuma deadpanned. Clearly she was tired of the games also. Before you kill me mind if you at least tell me your real name. Issei said calmly. He wasn't going to die, but he was going to amuse himself. No problem. My real name is Rainer. I made up the name Yuma just for you actually Rainer replied. The jig was up at this point, so she figured she'd engage in some banter before the big battle. I see. So that was your plan. Issei chuckled darkly catching Rainer off guard. What's so funny? Rainer said angrily. Well I realized what you were planning Rainer, and I have to admit it was pretty smart. You wanted to use the innocent schoolgirl act to get me to fall for you. Once I asked you on a date you'd accept and then kill me at sunset Issei replied. Correct. However seeing as how you clearly know who I am and what my plan was. I imagine you think you can beat me with whatever sacred gear you have. I don't think I can beat you Rainer. Issei smiled. That's so Rainer replied with a raised eyebrow. Issei picked that moment to make his move vanishing in an impressive show of speed and appearing right in front of Rainer, I know I can Issei replied before slamming Rainer in the gut with a powerful punch, causing her to crumple to the ground. Damn you Rainer gasped in pain. Issei was a lot stronger than she thought and this was not going to be an easy battle. I'd love to stay and chat, but I'm pretty sure that the devils will be here soon and whatever you and your fallen angel friends have planned, you probably don't want them knowing about it just yet. Issei smiled before calmly leaving the area. That bastard Rainer cursed as she managed to get to her feet and fly away moments before a magic circle appeared in the park. Looks like we were too late, Rhea's Gremory said with a bitter smile as she appeared with Akeno in order to help Issei. A few few for well he's still alive at least. Akeno smiled noticing that there was no body. Yes that's the strange part Rhea's replied. Something was very wrong with this situation and she didn't like it. Issei Yumi Kiba was frustrated was an understatement as lunch arrived the next day. Her master Riaz was after Issei Haidu, but the plan to make him a member of her peerage failed miserably. Riaz knew the Fallen was watching Issei and planned to seduce him before killing him, and Riaz would swoop in when that happened. The problem was Issei bluntly rejected her ruining Riaz's plan. To add to her annoyance, the Fallen went after Issei while she was at the kendo club, and it was only because of Kaneko secretly following them that Riaz was able to track him. Speaking of the kendo club, she noticed that the girls were oddly tense when she was there the day before. Remembering the strange conversation between Mireyama and Issei the day before, Yumi realized that Issei was involved with the kendo club somehow, and that contributed to his rejection. Making her way towards class 2A, Yumi hoped to have a chat with Issei, since she was the only one who could approach him without too much trouble. When she walked inside, she noticed that Issei wasn't there much to her surprise. Excuse me, where is Issei hi do Yumi ask nervously. I'm right behind you, trap. Do you mind moving out of my way? Issei growled catching Yumi off guard as she turned to face the very grumpy Issei. Yes, but I have a request to make to you on behalf of the Occult Research Club and Ria's Gremory. Yumi said calmly turning towards Issei. If it's to join your club, I refuse. Issei said firmly catching everyone off guard. Dude are you crazy? The orc is run by two of the most beautiful girls in the school. Mitsuda said in disbelief. Yes I know. I still don't care. Issei frowned before walking past Yumi and sitting down at his desk. Yumi was in trouble and she knew it. The Fallen were a known commodity, and Riaz only ignored them because they hoped to use the Fallen to get Issei. With that clearly not happening Riaz was rushing things, what will it take to get you to at least meet with her? Yumi groaned since she knew it was time to negotiate. Issei looked at the girl with a smile on his face, since he could satisfy his curiosity a little bit, if you want me to visit your club, wear the girl's uniform to school tomorrow, and without those idiotic bindings you have on your chest. Issei said bluntly. Huh. Yumi exclaimed not expecting him to say that of all things. You heard me. If you want me to consider joining the orc, I want you to embrace your inner woman even for a bit. Issei smiled. Drag's suggestion of hunting Yumi was amusing, but he wanted to see what Yumi really looked like. Hein Yumi said bashfully causing gasps of intrigue from the whole school. The terrific trap would finally dress as a girl. See you tomorrow Yumi. Issei smiled viciously. Whatever Yumi huffed but as she turned to leave, she couldn't help but notice the look of annoyance on Murayama's face. But the day over, Yumi Kiba was going to head to the orc in order to talk with her master on what the next move would be, since Issei made his ultimatum. Sadly she couldn't break the odd feeling she got from Murayama and figured a surprise visit to the club was in store. Something was bothering her on an instinctive level and she couldn't explain it, but she wanted answers. 
Opening the door to the locker room, nothing seemed off at first, but as she approached the entrance to the kendo hall, she heard something she didn't expect to hear. Issei go harder, a voice screamed with pleasure. What the hell Yumi gasped since those sounds could only mean one thing. Slowly opening the door to the kendo hall she saw something that stunned her. Damn Murayama you're tight Issei Haidu said in disbelief as he hammered Murayama from behind with both still dressed. Watching him were the other members of the kendo club and they were masturbating to the sight. What the hell is this? When did Issei start screwing the kendo club Yumi thought to herself. She continued to watch as a girl with fair skin short black hair and red rimmed glasses walked up to Issei with a lustful expression on her face. Um, are you going to go after Yumi next to say? The girl wondered causing Yumi's eyes to widen in shock. Why would you say the Clarissa, I have all of you? Why would I want Yumi Issei replied before pulling the girl into a heated kiss while continuing to please Murayama. Considering that you got her to dress in a female uniform, AHH, and your nature as a dragon, it makes sense. Murayama explained as Issei pummeled her pussy. The rest of the club voiced their curiosity on the subject as well. As Clarissa pulled away from the kiss, Issei finally answered the question. Maybe I will maybe I won't. Admittedly Yumi annoys me because she denies her female self. Issei smiled before spinning his face towards the entrance and looking straight at the relatively hidden Yumi with an icy expression. However, whether or not she's worthy of the hunt depends on her. Issei said with a vicious smile before licking his lips. Yumi fled the kendo hall with a massive blush on her face since this was nothing like she expected. The mere idea that Issei could desire her caught her off guard because she had long denied her female self. The upcoming conversation with Ria's was going to be an important one. Issei Haidu was amused to say the least with the way things played out over the last few days. It's been two days since Issei made his public demand of Yumi, and she had yet to come through to the disappointment of the rest of his class and the school. Not to mention, she hadn't confronted him about what he said at the kendo club. I wonder why the hesitation. If Ria's is after me, she has to do something soon enough. Issei thought to himself as he attempted to take a nap during homeroom. Who knows partner, but I get the feeling that they'll no come for you soon enough. Drake chuckled. Yes, but why the delay in acting? Yumi knows what I want her to do and it's really a simple task. Issei replied as he continued to relax. Um dude you might want to look up Motohama said nervously from nearby him. Moto how many times have I told you to not interrupt me when I'm trying to nap? Issei frowned. And here I thought you wanted to see what I really look like Issei. Yumi scoffed causing Issei to open his eyes, and boy was he glad he did. Turns out that Yumi had large breasts that surpassed Murayama's and incredibly delicious legs. Absolutely stunning Yumi. The two-day wait was more than worth it. Issei smiled happily. Does this mean you'll keep your word? Yumi said bashfully trying to hold back a blush. Yes I will. I'll be at the orc this afternoon to meet with Ria's Issei replied. Cool Yumi said calmly before leaving as the class looked on in shock. The leader of the perverted trio was about to join the club of the two most beautiful girls in the school. As Issei and Yumi approached the third floor of the orc, Issei found himself torn on what to do. He wanted to take Yumi somewhere and have his way with her as Drag suggested, but he was also curious why Rias was so interested in him, and there was another question that needed to be asked. So Yumi, why did it take you two days to go through with my request? Issei wondered. If she was doing this for Rias' sake he would be disappointed. I was so tired in the morning that I forgot Yumi replied cutely, but it was a total lie. As a loyal knight, she took great offense to Issei's actions. If it weren't for Ria's ordering her to do so the night before, Yumi probably wouldn't have done it. I see Issei frowned as they finally arrived at the club room. She was lying and Issei knew it. This was Ria's decision and that further spurned him to find out what was going on behind the scenes. President I'm here Yumi said calmly before walking into the club room. Much to Issei's amusement, Ria's was sitting down at her desk calmly with a Keno standing nearby. Issei noticed that there was a third girl sitting on the couch Kaneko Tauju, who was somehow the school's mascot, even as a first-year student. She had white hair with hazel eyes and a very flat chest, compared to the likes of Ria's Akeno, and now apparently Yumi. Thank you Yumi Ria smiled before turning to Issei with a more serious expression. I must confess I thought that recruiting you to the orc would be a much simpler task Issei. Ria's admitted with a smile on her face. Is that so Issei replied nonchalantly. That's right, but you're here now so how about I properly introduce myself. Ria said calmly. Issei found the whole thing amusing, but decided to remind Ria's of one important fact, as much as Yumi may hate me for this Ria's. I agreed to visit the club if Yumi put on her uniform. I never said I would join. I see Ria's frowned in annoyance. Yufufufu he's an interesting one. Akendo chuckled before devil wings popped out of her shoulder blades. Um Akendo your wings are out. Yumi said nervously since she was still unaware. Yes they are and considering how calm he is I'd say we need to stop playing games. Akendo smiled as everyone looked towards a relaxed Issei. It seems you know what we are, don't you Issei? 
Rhea said with a frown of her own. Issei simply smiled before closing his eyes, and the orc watched in shock as his sacred gear appeared. Yes I do and I take it you know what this is also. Issei replied as the group stared at his gauntlet, you're the red dragon emperor. Rhea's gasped. Now Issei's rejection of the fallen angel Rainer made sense. That's right and I figured I'd keep the simple Rhea's, I have zero intention of joining your peerage, so if that's the reason you wanted me, I'm going to say no and be on my way. Rhea's was internally furious, but realized there was nothing she could do for now, very well Issei. Just know that if you're ever in need of us. Come stop by. Rhea's frowned. I assure you I won't need you but very well. Issei smiled as he made his way out of the orc past and extremely annoyed Yumi. Later that night Issei was sitting on his bed with a smile on his face after an otherwise satisfying day. After his trip to the orc he went over to the kendo club and continued his fun with the girls and went home without any more fuss. That ended up being a rather fun day drag. Issei chuckled. He got to see Yumi in a girl's uniform and he basically gave a middle finger to Rias. Yes it was. Though I'm surprised you didn't manipulate the situation more. Drag wondered. I manipulated it just enough Issei smiled just as a magic circle appeared in the middle of his room and out popped Yumi in the girl's uniform. You can't be serious. Drag chuckled. Ah, but I am. I replied mentally to Drag before turning my focus towards Yumi. What do you want Yumi? Issei frowned. He could ignore the fact that Yumi appeared in his room since he long suspected Rias was spying on him. The question was why. I've come to make a deal with you Issei. Yumi said with a visible frown on her face. What sort of deal? Issei questioned. Rias needs your help for an event that's coming soon, and since you clearly won't join her peerage, I want you to act as her assassin. Yumi replied. Issei was intrigued by the news, but that wasn't enough, and why should I help you with this so-called event? Issei scoffed. Yumi didn't reply, but simply began to strip sliding off her skirt and revealing a silver pair of panties with black dots on them. As she began to undo her shirt, she looked towards Issei with an extremely bashful expression, because if you agree to help us. You can have me in exchange Yumi said bashfully as she stood at the edge of his bed in just her underwear. Like I said drag, just enough. Issei smiled as he got up and walked towards the underwear clad Yumi. We have a deal Issei smiled happily. Not quite the hunt that he originally planned, but the terrific trap was his. Lemon start, a smiling Issei walked over to Yumi and cupped her face before kissing her on the lips. He was a bit annoyed at Yumi's reluctance, but since she was giving herself up he couldn't complain much. Get onto the bed Yumi Issei said firmly wanting Yumi to put herself in position for him. Alright Yumi said bashfully as she got onto the bed and spread her legs for Issei to see her exposed pussy. Yumi watched with bated breath as Issei slid his white shirt off revealing a shockingly toned body. Oh wow Yumi gasped not expecting the perverted man to be this ripped. Oh you haven't seen anything yet Yumi. Issei smiled as he pulled his pants and boxers down, revealing a 10-inch penis that was 2 inches thick and throbbing. So big. Yumi gasped knowing that the monster was coming for her purity. And this is going to be taking your virginity in a moment, but first I want to enjoy those breasts of yours properly. Issei smiled as he walked over to the bed and straddled Yumi's stomach. I understand Yumi said bashfully leaning up so she could undo her bra tossing it to the side before wrapping her breasts around his massive member and sliding them up and down his shaft, doing her best imitation of a titfic. The only reason she even knew about that was because she realized that the only way she could get Issei to help is to sacrifice her body, and Akeno had the magazine she'd require. These are a true treasure Yumi. Issei moaned enjoying the work of the formerly innocent knight. It was amateurish compared to the likes of Murayama and the other busty members of the kendo club, but her blushing face and the knowledge that he was the only one who would ever enjoy this was enough to motivate him. Thank you Yumi said bashfully as she tried to make Issei feel as good as possible. Why don't I help you along Issei smiled as he reached back with his right hand to tease Yumi's clothed mound since her upper half was at his mercy already. Ah. Yumi yelped not expecting Issei to do that. Now that was a beautiful voice and since I want to hear more. I think it's time we switch Issei smiled as he caught Yumi off guard by getting off her stomach and lying down next to her. Yumi nodded since she knew what Issei was after and slid her panties off before straddling Issei's stomach, placing her exposed pussy right above Issei's head. Are you ready Yumi said bashfully ready for her first 69. Yes I am but don't forget to do your part, Issei smiled as he stuck a finger inside her snatch. Ah. Yumi moaned with pleasure not used to having anything inside her crotch. She had never even masturbated before so this was all new at her. You have work to do Yumi Issei teased as he continued to torment Yumi's snatch with his fingers. You're too good at this Yumi moaned as she tried to start doing her part but failed to. I get plenty of practice thanks to the kendo club and I doubted you've ever masturbated because you gave up your feminine side. Issei smirked as he stopped using his fingers and slid his tongue into Yumi's snatch. Hi. Yumi moaned again. 
Issei was right and Yumi gave up her feminine side, but she was still determined to make Issei submit to her somehow. You should probably get to sucking Yumi because at the rate you're going we won't ever get done. Issei smiled before resuming his work. Yumi was furious that Issei was toying with her, and she felt something she hadn't felt in a long time, pride as a woman, you asked for it, Issei Yumi said angrily, as she forced her lips down Issei's massive shaft without any hesitation at all. Gag reflex be damned she was going to make Issei give in. That's more like it Issei chuckled as he continued to slide inside Yumi's snatch. The battle between the hidden dragon and the terrific trap had begun at last, with Yumi skillfully bobbing up and down Issei's shaft, while Issei toyed with Yumi's pussy using an extremely skilled tongue. Neither teen was going to give in since for Yumi, it would mean she lost power over Issei, and for Issei, it would be a disgrace to lose to a girl who practically forgot what being a girl was like. The duel lasted around 5 minutes before Yumi Kiba finally gave in to the new sensation she was feeling. Issei I'm going to coom. Yumi said happily. The girl. Let me enjoy the sweet juices of Yumi Kiba. Issei smiled happily continuing to lap up her juices. Kooming. Yumi moaned as she sprayed her juices all over Issei's face. The first round went to Issei. Delicious a smiling Issei said happily as he got to his knees at last, with his member restored to full length. Yumi knew exactly what was expected of her, and she got into a new position with her breast squished against the bed and her rear in the air. Issei please be gentle. This is my first time. Yumi pleaded as Issei's member approached. Her virginity was about to belong to Issei Haidu, and she knew it. Nope Issei smiled as he slammed his member into Yumi's entrance, taking her virginity with no effort at all. Ahhh. Yumi moaned as her virginity was taken viciously by Issei. Damn you're tight. Issei grunted, but she wasn't so tight that he couldn't manage, and before Yumi could recover, he began moving inside her. Slow down Issei. I can't take it Yumi screamed out as Issei hammered her snatch relentlessly. That's good Yumi. This is what pleasure is like. This is what the kendo girls get to experience and if you're lucky I'll let you enjoy it again. Issei smiled happily as Yumi tightened around him. As Issei continued to power into her womb the pain she was feeling was started to switch to pleasure, and her body gave into Issei's forceful actions. Keep going Issei. This is so good Yumi moaned her body barely able to control itself. For the first time in a long time she remembered what it was like to truly be a woman. Yes it is Yumi. You would never experience this if you stayed as you were. Issei smiled reaching down and pulling Yumi into his chest by her massive breasts. Yes. Yumi cried out as she came again from the sheer overload of pleasure she was feeling. How does it feel Yumi? How does it feel to have me fucking you like this and making you scream my name? Issei roared happily. It's amazing. I feel so amazing. Yumi cried out. For just a moment she forgot all of her pain. For just a moment she forgot about all her suffering. For just a moment she remembered what it was like to smile to dream and to be happy. Good Yumi because I'm going to keep making you feel like this. Issei smiled happily. Yes, Issei. Please keep doing this to me. Yumi replied. I will Yumi, but first I'm going to coom inside you. Issei said happily his limit finally arriving. Yes, Issei. Fill me up with your seed. Yumi cried happily. Because of her devil status she wasn't worried about getting pregnant, and she had a sneaking suspicion Issei was sterile as well. If he was constantly having sex with the kendo club being sterile was an obligation. Alright Issei said happily taking his hands off her breasts and placing them back on her waist, so he could really hammer her. Kuming Yumi cried out as her juices sprayed all over Issei's pounding member. Here we go. Issei roared spraying his seed into the blonde, filling her to the brim, before he was forced to pull out because of how much kum he sent into her. So good Yumi said happily her face stuck in an ahigao as she collapsed onto the bed. She was so happy that she actually forgot about the reason for her initial visit and simply enjoyed her pleasure. Good night Yumi Issei smiled as he kissed Yumi on the forehead before pulling him and Yumi under the covers so they could get some sleep. Lemon end. As the sun shone on another day in Kuo, Issei Haidu woke up with a smile on his face. The night before he claimed Yumi Kiba as his own, and the looks of pleasure on her face were absolutely amazing, as the terrific trap became a woman due to his touch. What a night Issei chuckled as he got out of bed in order to get a shower to start his day. So just like that you're going to leave me alone. What a bad lover you are. And apparently awake Yumi chuckled as she stared at Issei, her body still basking in the afterglow of losing her virginity. I guess one more round couldn't hurt. Issei chuckled as he went back over to the naked blonde and began yet another round of fun. When he arrived in class Issei was quickly met by his perverted comrade Mitsuda, who no doubt wanted to know how the meeting with the orc went, so how was the orc? Mitsuda said curiously. It was a pretty nice club. There aren't many members but they're all women. Issei smiled knowing his comrade would hate how lucky he'd become. So are you a member now Motohama spoke up eager to see if his friend had joined the legendary club. It was a question that caused a bit of intrigue from the class, since the orc had a major reputation, and Issei was, well Issei. 
No. Ria's offered to invite me, but I said that I'd think about it, and she understood Issei smiled much to the relief of a watching Murayama and Kadis, and annoyance of his two comrades. Bro how could you waste such a chance? Motohama said angrily. Enough Moto. I just want to take a nap. Issei said firmly knowing that his two friends would stop after that. Odd Motohama conceded not wanting to anger his friend further well aware of what his rage was like. Like that Issei went to sleep and relaxed for the rest of homeroom. When lunchtime arrived, Issei was hoping to just have a simple lunch, but unfortunately for him, life wasn't that simple. Excuse me, is Issei Haidu still around? Yumi Kiba said calmly as she walked into the classroom. But the fuck Mitsuda said in shock and as Issei looked towards the blonde he understood why. Yumi was in the female uniform yet again. Many among the class figured that the only time Yumi would wear the female uniform was in order to convince Issei to join the orc, but since the meeting already took place, they figured she would revert back to the male uniform. The terrible trap is no more. I can't believe it Motohama gasped. For once Moto we actually agree on something. Kiryu chuckled. Issei found his classmate's shock to be hilarious, but decided to spare Yumi further embarrassment, what is it Yumi? Issei finally spoke up. Oh. Ria's wanted to meet you for lunch. I hope you don't mind Yumi said bashfully to the shock of everybody since Issei supposedly turned her down. I see Issei replied as he got up and got his stuff before leaving with a blonde. Once they were gone, the entire class had one thought on their minds. What the heck is going on? Finally arriving in the orc club room, Issei couldn't help but find the whole situation amusing, so I take it, Ria's wants to talk to me about my job for her. Issei said calmly. That's right. Yumi lied as they approached the club room. Ria's wasn't aware of the deal that she made with Issei, but fortunately for her, Ria's asked if she could bring him to the club room when she checked in this morning. She was fortunate that Kaneko wasn't there since she'd easily be able to smell Issei's scent over her, despite the shower she took once she returned home. Opening the door, the pair found Ria's sitting at her desk with a frown on her face. We've arrived President Ria's. Yumi said calmly. Issei couldn't help but notice that Ria's expression went from solemn to happy in a matter of seconds which was amusing to say the least, hello there Issei. I'm glad Yumi was able to get you without too much trouble. Ria said peacefully. Since we don't have much time, I'm curious what's so important that you need my help specifically. As the heiress to the Grimory clan, you must have access to plenty of resources, Issei said bluntly catching Ria's off guard. Yes well there aren't many things, but this is a bit of a personal matter. Ria said bashfully. Is that so Issei said with a raised eyebrow. I have a fiancé named Dreiser Phoenix. He is a disgusting man who cares very little for me outside of my body and my family name. I need your help to get rid of him. Ria said frankly. Issei couldn't help but wonder how bad her fiancé was, if she was taking all the steps she had taken just to get him on her side, okay, I'll help you. Now if you don't mind I'd like to get back to class, Issei replied respectfully. Thank you Issei Ria said civilly. Sure Issei replied before leaving the room. Partner if I didn't know any better I'd swear you planned this Drake chuckled. I don't plan it, but I can't deny how lucky I am. Issei replied with a smile as he relaxed in his room with Murayama, and Kata snuggled into his body. All three were naked, and the kendo duo was recovering from a very hot threesome. When he got back from his lunch meeting with Ria's, he could tell that not only were Mitsuda and Motohama jealous, but so were Murayama and Kadis. Granted they were jealous of different things. Mitsuda and Motohama were mad that he was getting free access to a group of beautiful girls, while Murayama and Kadis were worried that they'd be replaced. When he went to visit the kendo club after class was over, he saw a note on the entrance to the hall, saying that they wanted him to wait until after their club was over to come see them, and Issei obliged choosing to take a nap in his classroom. When he finally came over, Murayama and Kadis asked if they go come over to his house for a little fun, and he naturally agreed. They introduced themselves to his parents, saying that they were both interested in Issei, and decided to share him much to his parents' amusement. Fortunately for Issei, they didn't bring up the fact he'd been screwing the whole club at the same time. Unfortunately for Issei, his parents mentioned Arena his childhood friend and source of his original swordswoman fetish, something that Murayama was aware of. Rather ironically it actually seemed to motivate the two girls more when it came time for their sexy time, and the girl's passion was hard to miss. So have you figured out how to deal with your phoenix problem? You won't join the Gremory girl's peerage, and there aren't many ways to lure him out otherwise. Yeah I know, it's going to be tricky Issei started to say as a magic circle appeared in his room again. Given that it was the Gremory clan circle Issei expected Yumi to pop out, but even Issei was shocked when Ria's Gremory herself popped out, dressed in her uniform. I hope you don't mind Issei, but I wanted to personally thank you for helping me with Riser. I take it I don't need to say more, Ria said calmly as she reached for her top. Problem solved Drag chuckled since Ria solved the problem for him. Issei agreed, but considering the circumstances this was not the time or place. That's fine, but you picked a bad time Ria's. 
Issa grimaced since Rhea's shirt was already undone, revealing her incredible cleavage. He may have a swordsman fetish, but Rhea's grimery was a princess, and the dragon in him would have loved to devour her on any other day. What do you Rhea started to say before she noticed that they weren't alone? I see. You had some company tonight. Rhea said with a slight look of surprise on her face at the kendo duo sharing his bed. Give me a sec. Issei said calmly as he wriggled out of the grasp of the kendo girls. A very calm Issei walked over to his clothes that were tossed away by the kendo duo, allowing a now fully dressed Rias to get a good look his half-mast member. So big Rias gasped not expecting him to be packing that kind of heat. Yes it is, but right now we have business to discuss a smiling Issei said calmly as he got dressed himself. Just as he finished getting dressed, another magic circle appeared in his room much to his surprise. The person who appeared in this circle was a woman with fair skin, silver braided hair, and cherry lipstick. Issei couldn't help but notice that the crest was similar to Rhea's, which meant that this woman was from the Gremory clan. Seems you couldn't do it Haoju-sama the woman said calmly. That's right Rhea's replied causing Issei to look at the two with a frown on his face. Clearly we have matters to discuss, but again not here. Lead the way. The woman replied with a smile. Issei led the duo down to his living room to talk, hoping that the kendo duo didn't wake while he was gone and get curious. Sitting on his couch Issei stared at the two wondering just what was going on. So why don't we start from the top? Issei frowned. The women in the French maid costume spoke up first, first off, my name is Grafia, and I'm the head maid of the Grimory family and loyal queen to her older brother Serzich's. As I'm sure you're now aware, Rias hates her fiancé or Iser with a passion, and she's been looking for a means to get rid of the engagement for some time. I gathered that from way she tried to get me to take her virginity just now and some of her other actions. Issei deadpanned causing Rias to look away shamefully. However something you said bothers me. Rias is the head of the Gremory clan, but yet she has an older brother. Why isn't he the head of the clan? Her brother is one of the leaders of the devil world, and before you ask, he cannot interfere directly due to bylaws that prevent Amayu from getting involved in his family's affairs. Issei nodded because that made sense, got it Issei replied. Now if you don't mind, I have a question for you young man, and please be honest with me. As you are no doubt aware, Oju-sama intended to have you join her peerage via other less honorable methods, but failed. Why are you helping her despite that and just as importantly, how can you help her without being a member of her peerage? Grafia questioned. Grafi often looked over papers when Rhea's brother was slacking off and discovered that Rhea's was aware of the fallen angels being in town for almost a month before finally dealing with them a few days ago. When she questioned Rias about it, she learned about Issei and Rias' original plan to make him a part of her peerage. A part of her was furious that Rias would go that far to get rid of Riser, but another part knew just what a monster the Phoenix Air really was. I'm helping her because I made a contract her night Yumi. I agreed to act as her assassin in exchange for some favors. Issei smiled. Rias and Grafia were stunned by the news particularly Rias who wasn't aware of such a contract with Yumi. Before she could ask anything else Grafia interjected, very well, but how would you get him to face you in particular? Grafia wondered. Why don't Rias and I simply have a repeat of what she planned tonight, but make it a more public affair? Issei smiled. He wouldn't take her virginity just yet, but he wouldn't say no to infuriating somebody. The slightly blushing Rias nodded her approval which was enough, very well. Fortunately for you, he's coming for a visit tomorrow, which is no doubt why Lady Rias was being so hasty. Grafia explained. All right Issei replied before the two left via magic circle. You've got to be one of the luckiest partners I've ever had. Drake chuckled. Maybe but for now we wait. Issei replied before returning to bed. Things were definitely about to get fun. The next day he was back in the orc with a smile on his face, ready to see what this riser person was all about. Arriving at the club, Issei saw Keno, Kaneko, and a new face he hadn't seen before. She was a shorter girl with long blonde hair and big green eyes. Who's the new girl? Issei couldn't help but wonder since she was wearing the Kuo uniform. This is Asia Argento. She's a former nun that was captured by the fallen angels that were in town. We saved her and because of her sacred gear, I made her a part of my peerage. She'll be transferring to Kuo next week, Rhea said calmly. I see Issei replied not asking more. Yufufufu why don't you sit down Issei. We have a lot to discuss Akeno smiled pointing to the couch opposite of Kaneko. Alright Issei smiled before sitting down calmly. Before any more discussion could be had Rias straddled Issei's waist pressing her chest against his. Time to put on a show Issei Aria smiled as she pressed her lips against Issei's. Let the fun beg in Issei thought to himself. Deciding to add some flair of his own, Issei slid his tongue into a slightly surprised Rias' mouth and began to dominate the kiss. The orc watched in sheer disbelief as the pair engaged in a fierce makeout session and when Magic Circle appeared behind Issei, the two new figures joined the shocked group. What is the meaning of this a male voice screamed angrily. 
The smiling Rias pulled away from her kiss with a say admittedly a little flustered because of how intense a say was and faced her fiancé. Hello Rias Aria said with a flushed expression on her face that certainly wasn't an act. The smiling Issei got up and turned towards the voice, and when he got a good look at Riser, he did his best not to laugh. Riser was an older looking guy with spiky blonde hair and dark blue eyes. He was wearing a burgundy blazer with a white shirt opened up and matching burgundy pants with black dress shoes. It's nice to meet you Riser. I gotta admit you have a wonderful fiancé. She's a great kisser and even better in bed. Issei said happily as he walked over to Riser in order to shake his hand. Issei wait Ria said nervously thinking that this would not end well for him. You bastard. Riser yelled out before grabbing Issei by the neck and lighting him on fire. Issei. Rias exclaimed as Issei was seemingly engulfed in powerful flames. This was not what she planned at all. Serves him right. Riser smiled happily as the flames seemingly devoured Issei and killed him. Serves who right Issei said from the entrance of the club room with a smile on his face and more importantly with no traces of Riser's burns on his body. But the Riser exclaimed. It's a good thing I can use clones or I would have been cooked, Issei smiled as he stepped next to Ria's before wrapping his right arm around Ria's and groping her breast with no hesitation causing Ria's to moan. Why you? Riser said angrily before Grafia raised her power suffocating the room including a very surprised Issei. That's enough Riser. I can understand your frustration, but you should be much more professional than that Grafia said angrily before calming down. Forgive me Melody Grafia. I just couldn't believe that my fiancé would sleep with such a lowlife. I assumed that he was blackmailing her and decided to protect her in my own way, Riser said angrily. Issei twitched heavily at the dig and decided to make his move. Big words for a one of gigolo. How about instead of a cheap shot, we have a real fight? Issei growled. Riser smiled like a loon since he could kill two birds with one stone. He could destroy somebody who has seemingly claimed what's his and show Rias that any more attempts to resist their engagement would be met with brutal reprieve, very well boy. I'll give you 10 days to prepare since I doubt you'll be a match for me otherwise. Riser said boldly. Sounds good to me. Issei replied confidently. See you in 10 days whelp. Riser said angrily. It appears Riser and I have to go. Grafia said calmly before she and Riser left in a magic circle. Once he was gone, a worried Yumi ran over to Issei. Are you okay, Issei Yumi said nervously. Yes I'm fine Yumi. Issei said calmly before leaning down and planting a kiss on the knight's cheek. If you want to say, we can help you train. I know you have a sacred gear, but Riser is a beast in his own right, Rhea said nervously. She knew how dangerous Riser was, and that little display didn't help her nerves. I'll be just fine. Now if you don't mind I have to get home. Issei said calmly. Rhea's was stunned that Issei would dismiss her training, but Issei clearly knew his power better than she did, okay, but if you need anything you know where to find us. Rhea said bashfully. No problem Issei chuckled before leaving. As Issei made his way home from another day of class he was unusually drained. Now that Rias and Rainer weren't watching he could resume his morning training, and he did so with gusto. Much to his amusement and the annoyance of his two perverted comrades, Mureyama and Caddis were also much more aggressive. Each of them taking a turn to make out with him before class started and Yumi had twice cut him off on the way to the kendo club for her own makeout session. I never thought I'd see the day that being popular was a headache, Issei chuckled as he made his way home from another fuck session with the kendo club that featured his two classmates taking main roles. Yes and it seems you've become even more popular. Drake chuckled. Yeah I know but this stalker isn't exactly human Issei groaned as he continued moving. For the last 10 minutes he was being followed by somebody and it wasn't one of the devils at school. Making his way over to a nearby park he sat down on a bench and calmly waited until he was alone. You can come out now. Issei shouted to seemingly nobody. Your sensory abilities are impressive. A calm female voice said before walking into the park. The woman in question was a little older than he was and had light brown hair and green eyes, but her outfit was the real surprise. Her clothing was a mix of a European female knight costume and a Japanese samurai with a white headband around her hair. The large broadsword was on her left hip which intrigued Issei a bit. So who are you miss and why were you following me Issei wondered though he had a fairly good idea of the why part already. My name is Carloman and I'm the Knight of Riser Phoenix. My master sent me to kill you so he doesn't have to waste his time with your battle. Carloman said frankly. Is that so Issei said calmly getting up from his spot. Riser was much more of a prick than he expected, but he couldn't complain since he sent a beautiful swordsman his way. Yes and I apologize for what I must now do to you. Carloman shouted as she grabbed her blade and charged at Issei, aiming for an overhand slash. What a shame. Issei shrugged as he used a burst of speed to get into Carloman's guard. What are you? Carloman gasped when she realized where Issei was. 
Riser Superior Issei said coldly before grabbing Carloman's neck and putting her in a sleeper hold, knocking her out in one attack. That wasn't much of a fight Drake chuckled. Issei stood right next to the prone Carloman and smiled. Perhaps, but now I can have even more fun. Issei said viciously before activating his own magic circle and teleporting home. Ugh what happened Carloman groaned as she returned to the conscious world. The last thing she remembered was charging Issei Haidu and then nothing. You tried to attack me, but I put you in a sleeper hold and brought you back with me to my room, so nobody discovered you. Issei smiled from his desk. Harleman's eyes shot open and she quickly gathered her surroundings, finding that she was indeed in a bedroom, but that wasn't all. Despite the fact she blatantly attacked Issei in public and clearly lost, she was fully clothed and able to move freely. Hell she could even reach her blade what's your game? Carloman said angrily. She attacked him in public, but instead of informing anybody, he simply took her out of the public eye. No game at all. I simply didn't want to kill you, and leaving you there for somebody to find would have been extraordinarily stupid. Issei replied calmly. So I can leave right now if I wish. Carloman said firmly. His earlier display proved that he was far too powerful for her to beat, and that was a bitter feeling indeed. That's right. If you wanted to you could grab your blade and return to Riser right now. Issei replied. I see Carloman said calmly before getting up to grab her blade and leaving without even questioning it further. If she had waited a few moments, Carloman would have seen the vicious smile on Issei's face. The next night, a smiling Issei relaxed in his room after a surprisingly tame day. The kendo club had a match today so he couldn't go see them, but he did stop by the orc to see Arias and tell her that his training was going well. Partner why didn't you tell the Gremory heiress about what happened? Drake wondered. It was a good question. If he told Rias about what Riser did, there was a good chance that the engagement would be nullified, since they already agreed to a fight, and he wouldn't have to bother with it further. I did it because there was a benefit to keeping the secret. Issei smiled. And what's that Drake wondered. Issei was about to respond, but a magic circle appeared in his room, you're about to see it. Issei replied as Carloman appeared in front of him in the same outfit from the day before, but without all the armor. What brings you here Carloman? Issei said with a coy smile. You already know the answer you bastard. I can't believe I was tricked so easily. Carloman said angrily. Oh Issei smiled. That's right. Lord Riser realized that if you tell Lady Gremory about what he did, he's finished. As a result he's ordered me to silence you by any means necessary. Carloman frowned. And because you can't beat me as a warrior, you hope to use your charm as a woman. Issei replied knowingly. That's correct. Carloman said with a bitter expression on her face. Issei smiled as he got up from the bed and walked over to Carloman, then let's begin. Issei smiled. Lemon start. A smiling Issei walked over to Carloman and attempted to kiss her on the lips, but she blocked his attempt with her right hand. I may be giving you my body, but I will not allow you to kiss me. Carloman said firmly before pulling her one-piece outfit over her head, revealing a pair of low-cup breasts and a shaved pussy. Very well. I suppose a blowjob isn't out of the question. Issei smiled as he pulled down his pants. The still angry Carloman was curious what the young man was packing, and her eyes widened when she saw his shaft, huge Carloman said in shock. From your reaction, I take it I'm larger than Riser. He seems like the type who has sex with his peerage constantly, Issei chuckled as he finally got naked himself. Shut up Carloman said bashfully as she hunched in front of Issei. Carloman would never admit this out loud, but despite his bold and brash nature, Riser was only around 5 inches rock hard. As for Issei, he was a solid 11 inches, and Carloman had the sense that he could get bigger and harder. A nervous knight kissed his member briefly finding the taste to be acceptable, and begin sucking on the massive head. Very nice Carloman. Issei smiled causing the knight to blush slightly. Do you not feel good Carloman wondered nervously. Considering how vocal and rough her master was, she was surprised that he wasn't doing more to spurn her on. I feel great Carloman, but I want you to take your time and enjoy this. Issei replied causing her to blush. Okay Carloman nodded and continued her ministrations, but even after five minutes Issei hadn't come. Her best techniques were doing nothing, and Issei was still as calm as ever. Then again his member was also significantly larger than her master's, which no doubt played a role. Realizing that she needed to up the ante, Carloman grabbed her massive breasts and surrounded Issei's prick, hoping that would serve as motivation. That's the stuff Issei smiled as the blowjob became a titfic and blowjob combo. Carloman smiled as Issei's moans began to surface which encouraged her to do more for him. I knew it was only a matter of time. Carloman scoffed trying to exude confidence. You say the Carloman but I'm pretty sure you're going to come before I am. Issei teased. Carloman twitched heavily since Issei was right on the money. Carloman's pussy was soaked because of the heat of his prick, and the part of her that was loyal to Riser was fighting with the part of her that wondered just how different the man she was currently hunched in front of was. Just come already you bastard, Carloman said angrily continuing to tease Issei's shaft with her tongue and breasts. 
It took another 5 minutes before she finally received her reward. I'm cooming Carla Minase said happily causing the night to perk up as Issei's release coated her face and breasts, somehow avoiding her hair. Finally Carlaman said in relief since they had been at it for 15 minutes. If I didn't know any better Carlaman, I'd say your master is a quick shot. You said that was only going to a blowjob. Issei taunted. Carlaman didn't dignify his taunt with a response and simply got onto the bed and on her knees. Just fuck me already and get this over with Carlaman said angrily. Such a tsundier. I know you're excited because your pussy is soaked Carlaman. I don't even need any foreplay which is a pleasant surprise Issei smiled happily as he got onto the bed behind the night and lined his member up with her entrance. She was doing everything to suggest that she wasn't into it, but Issei knew better. She wanted this bad, and Issei was definitely going to give it to her. Fuck ya ooh. Carlaman screamed out as Issei slid into her. I'm the one fucking you here Carlaman, and that sounded like you came. Issei smirked. Just get it over with Carlaman said angrily, knowing that she did coom just from his massive member going inside her. Whatever you say, Issei smiled putting his hands on her waist and hammering Carlaman with powerful strokes. The knight tried to resist, but after only a minute the resistance fell. So good. So big. Carlaman moaned happily. Living in already. Issei teased as he continued to tease her. Yes. Lord Riser never made me feel this way. Carlaman finally admitted. But well why don't you feel more? Issei smiled leaning down so he could grope Carlaman's impressive breasts. Yes. Carlaman moaned as Issei fondled his breasts while not losing any speed. The pleasure coursing through her was amazing. Well how about we change things up, Issei smiled shocking Carlaman by pulling out for a minute. Why are you stopping Carlaman looked back with disappointment in her eyes. I want to see your beautiful face as I fuck you. Issei replied, and Carlaman went for it flipping her body so Issei could see everything. How's this Carlaman said bashfully a blush adoring her face. Perfect Issei smiled as he slid back into her and quickly resumed his work. Well he did enjoy the advantages of Dogja style with the Kendo duo and Yumi, this was different. He wanted to watch Carlaman as she gave in to him. So good. Carlaman said happily a look of pleasure on her face. Long forgotten was the fact she was manipulated by Issei, and now all that mattered was this pleasure. As the minutes passed she fell further and further, and she forgot all about Riser and his desires. I'm about to coom Carlaman, are you ready? Issei smiled happily as he kept his speed up. Yes, Issei. Come inside me. Carlaman said happily. All right Carlaman Issei smiled happily as he picked up speed once more before launching his load into Carlaman's pussy. Yes. Carlaman moaned happily cooming from the feeling of what she viewed as a real man going inside her. Lemon end. That was incredible Carlaman Issei smiled as he enjoyed the afterglow of his first time with the Phoenix family night. Carlaman smiled back before shocking even Issei by leaning up and pressing her lips against his. Issei could only respond in earnest engaging in a passionate makeout session with Carlaman before she pulled away after a minute. You are in that kiss. It's a shame Lord Riser is going to kill you. Carlaman said bashfully. I think I have a better chance against your master than you think. Issei smiled. Why's that Carlaman wondered curiously. Issei smiled viciously before activating his sacred gear much to Carlaman's shock. This is why Issei said happily as the boosted gear manifested on his arm. You're the Red Dragon Emperor Carlaman gasped. Yes and my power isn't only good on the battlefield. Drake told me that it actually does some wonderful things in the bedroom. Issei smiled as he pointed to a recovered member. Carlaman gasped at the fact he was still ready to go after all that and blushed heavily before saying, let's find out. Carlaman said with intrigue. Her master expected her to seduce him and she didn't see any problem with going another round since the first one felt so amazing. Sounds good to me, Issei smiled as he leaned in to kiss the knight, knowing that she was his latest lover. Unfortunately for him, he was interrupted by a magic circle appearing in his room. Things were about to get even more interesting. End of the year. So that's it for today's video guys, before you go just like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.